incredibly. Like, you know, my kids, to think that, you know, 18 years from today or whatever, 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 that we could all be show- having this moment where the, the person nearest to you wiped their bum. You know, you, 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 met, you had all the best intentions for them they're completely and just possibly brain chemistry and, and just things you know, had a bad egg, you know, and they've turned on you. And in that last second of going, oh, my God, you know, that, that would be just uh, the, 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 the worst nightmare for anyone ever. And you mentioned brain chemistry there, and that's what I say because he, you know, he had a life of in and out of uh, addiction to drugs and alcohol and things like that. So his brain was essentially fried, but not fried in, to the point you could talk to him and you could think he was a normal member of society until you know him and know his past and see how he reacts and... And that's why it wasn't anything from a young age. It was there's a clear turning point apparently from when he was about 14 years of age when he started on that sort of stuff. So, yeah, it's it's sad to hear my grandmother say think that she was a failure. But going back to that adversity and using it to your advantage and the mindset around that and what I've actually realised now and this is what I teach people is that I actually I, I believe and this is just my belief and my uh, interpretation of the world at the moment that there's ways that we can all use adversity to our advantage. And the diagram that I've created, the model that I've created that I teach to people, and I'm proud to say that I can teach you how to use your adversity to your advantage. It's not just telling you a couple of sayings that I've said before about, you know, this hasn't happened to you, it's happened for you. That's just the beginning. But the the model is shaped around congruency in your life. So what I've seen and what I've experienced is that you have to understand your core values. What are your core values as a person? And there's processes that you can go through to identify that. A lot of us understand that we value things, but how many of us actually go through the processes and write down and live by on a daily basis what our core values are? So understanding what their their values are, understanding or beginning to understand what your purpose is in life. And that might turn a few people off, but it is one of the most powerful things. And you think about all the para-athletes that I've talked about, listen to my podcast for non-para-athletes that talk in that way, my situation when you understand your purpose. So you've got your values and your purpose. Over here, you want to be clear on your goals and your visions in life. Or it doesn't have to be exact goals that you have to be clear on, but a vision. How do, you, how do you make choices on a daily basis if you don't even know what, you, where, what you're working towards? What are your goals and what are your visions? And it's the alignment of all these things. So your values, your purpose, and your goals and visions. And that's what we call congruency. When you get congruent with all of those things, that's when you can use your adversity to your advantage and you understand things at a deeper level and the ripple effect that you can make and you will make from that. That's so powerful in so many situations and like I said I'm really proud to be able to present that and to be able to coach people through that and we talk about coaching and you know I'm a proud Paralympic coach but I'm actually by the time this podcast goes out I won't be an employed Paralympic coach I've actually decided to step away from that job because as much as I love it and I'm passionate about it, I've been involved in Paralympic sport for the past 13 years as a coach and a therapist it's actually my limiting factor now to be employed by an organization as as a singular as a coach just for that regard I'll be a coach to the day I die and I will be a big impactor in Paralympic sport until the day I die, but it'll just be on a different level. So I move now into, I'll still consult as a coach and therapist, but also as a, I say this inverted commas, a life coach, but what I like to call a mentor and to to be able to teach and make this bigger impact. And that's why I'm really proud of the platform of the podcast. As you know, Drew, that people listening here, this is coaching in itself. This is teaching in itself. This is the ripple effect in itself. Can you move to the Gold Coast yet then? Well, I'll, uh, <laughs> you know that it's on the cards. We're actually moving here in January. So, right. yeah, so I'm, like I said, I'm about to leave the country again for five months. So I flew back here just to see you, Drew, and do this episode. Right. Now I'm out again. Excellent. And, <laughs> Excellent. And when my, You're in Sydney, yeah? I was in Sydney. I'm in limbo at the moment. So just right. after, just before I saw you last time, I'd packed everything up. My fiance and I had packed up into a uh, removalist truck, sent it all out to mum's shed in Cobar because right. we don't know when we'll be back exactly or where we're going to be, but our plans and we're getting drawn to the Gold Coast more and more. And that was our dream. We want to, we want to actually come and live at the Gold Coast and make our, our beautiful lives here. Okay. So how would you, um, how, how do we, uh, how, okay. Lou Ferguson, she was on the podcast two, two episodes ago, recovery expert. Okay. Right. And I said, come on, she's a big uh, hockey athlete. 
she was from the AIS as well. Um, uh, yeah. Anyway, anyway, I said, come on, Commonwealth Games is coming next year. We need to, we need to get serious at some point. We need to start backing teams. It, you know, it, she, I said, oh, are you getting all your recovery ice baths and all, and all this sort of uh, stuff into Commonwealth Games? She said, it's not that easy. You know, they don't, no one's really thinking that way, which I would have thought would, you know, Tom Tate, our mayor, would be going, all right, we need every recovery specialist that we've got on this because we need to win. We need to, you know, just like old school uh, Cobar rugby league team, pull in all the goods we got. We want the good chairs over here for our athletes. <laughs> over there, you get the rusty stuff for bloody New Zealand or something, you know. Oh, now you're going back to the old <laughs> footy days of yes. uh, make the change rooms as uncomfortable as possible yeah, for the opposition. <laughs> leave a dead chook in it for a, a week before. But, you know what I'm saying? Like, there's a, a clear goal. You're coming... You're coming soon. You'd be, you'd be. I'll be back in January. Yeah, I can there, guarantee I'll be a Gold Coast resident in January. There's something we all need to work towards. We, you know, these things only come around once in a million years, and and I wonder if you can. Um, yeah, so I, I know what you're getting at there, and what I'm really comfortable in is that I've stepped away from the sport at a time where yes, we're about to have our own home Commonwealth Games. Why wouldn't you stay to be try and be a coach and be a part of that? You know, I just come back from London where my one of my athletes, like I said, won three gold medals and broke two world records. I'm just at the beginning of my coaching career to really ex- expand that. But like I said to you, I, I know that w- when I look at my vision, my vision isn't to be the best athletics coach in the world. I've got really great mentors in the able-bodied and para world. Oh, in business also, like a mentoring right yeah yeah Yeah. and so those mentors are some of the best coaches in the world dan paff who's on uh the episode that i just recently released he coached donovan bailey to gold in the 96 olympics and consecutive olympic medalists and world championship medalists and he's an amazing mentor of mine and i respect to no end what he's done and arena in the paralympic world and just lives and breathes and will go to war for her athletes i respect all the results these are the best coaches in the world and they're my mentors and i look and i think well, actually, that's not the life that I want to live. That's not my legacy. So why should I continue on with that if that's not me in the future? And also, that's not fair on my athletes if I'm not one of those dedicated coaches that wants to live it and breathe it and dedicate my life to them because they dedicate their lives to the sport and the craft. So I'm really comfortable in the fact that I'm stepping away in a time where it looks like people probably think that I'm crazy. But I actually think that I'm crazy if I stay in it. And so in regards to what you're saying, I think I I fully trust the universe. I trust the timing of my life. And uh, without looking for things to be involved with the Commonwealth Games, it'll happen. I'm not saying that I'll be a team coach and that I'll be in living in the village with all the athletes, but I'll be involved. At what capacity, I'm not sure. But I guarantee you, let's catch up after the Commonwealth Games and I'll say that, that's, that was my role in the Commonwealth Games. I just... Yeah. Yeah, I'm just throwing it out to the universe in, a, in that way and I know that my involvement and whatever that involvement we, is, it'll be the right involvement because I'm so comfortable now in what I say yes to and what I say no to because I can measure it against what's authentic to me and what I value, my, my personal value and is that in line with my goals and my visions. So if I get an opportunity to sell McDonald's at the, the competition and be front row seat for every event, I'm going to say no because McDonald's is not part of my values. It's not part of my goals and visions. All right, I've got one for you because <clears throat> I'm a factory working guy from Logan. <laughs> How, who has never had a mentor, you know, actually said, you are my guy, you are my thing. So how does this all work anyway? Do, do they, these guys write invoices? Like, a, is it like you're, you, so, you know, like a... You raise a the, very great <clears throat> point because... I actually do a presentation just on mentoring and I present to sports communities and corporate communities on what is mentoring because it's a question some people just actually don't understand what is a mentor and the best way to think about it is a mentor is someone that you can learn from, trust, value and respect. So a mentor has to be someone that not just teaches you something. So for me, it's not just someone who can make me a better coach or a better therapist. It's someone who can make me a better person holistically. So when people are thinking about, oh, I've heard of this mentoring. How do I do it? What does it actually mean? Think about all those things. Learn, learn from, trust, value, respect, make you a better person. Who is that? Start doing your research. How do you reach out to mentors? Mentors to me, the most powerful mentors I've had in the last 
two years have been people don't even know that Brett Robbo from Cobar exists. And it's because of the podcast that I've been addicted to and listening and learning. And that just opens up the rabbit hole. So Lewis Howes was the first podcast I ever listened to, The School of Greatness. And I listened to, when he was at episode uh, 150, I'd listened to all of them once, some of them two or three times, made notes on it. And that's just the beginning of that podcasting journey. So I see there's a lot of mentors out there that, that I learn, value, trust, respect. I know their authenticity. They're making me a better person holistically, but they don't even know that I exist. So these physical mentors that I speak about in the track and field world, and I've got them in family, I've got them in business, and I'm so grateful for that, but don't think that you actually have to reach out to someone and say, can you be my mentor? What you actually have to do is resonate with them and great leaders, so not great managers, but great leaders will mentor you without, they know when people need or want mentoring. So sometimes you do need to approach people, but what I've actually said, there's a lot of people that I mentor now, far removed from high performance sport that I mentor and teach and coach. And they haven't come to me, a couple of them came to me early days and said, can you mentor me? But what I actually say to people is don't ask someone to be your mentor. Go to them and say, I value you. I respect what you do. You have taught me a lot already. What can I do for you? How can I collaborate with you to help you on your journey? And they'll, if they are smart, they will utilize that. And therefore, when they utilize you, that's your mentoring. Because they, they might say to you, come into my office, come into my, what do you call this, workshop, come into my podcast studio, whatever it is that you come into, come down to the track with me and watch me train, whatever it might be, you've asked if you can do something for them, they'll think about it, they'll use you and then you doing that something for them is you being mentored by them. So mentoring, don't think that you've just got to go and, and shadow someone and learn from them and listen to them and things like that. There's a real, like I said, I do I present on that because there's a such an untapped power to mentoring until you fully understand it and fully tap into it. So people can have mentors in their pockets through podcasts. You are a mentor to so many people that you don't even realize because of this podcast. You've done 170 episodes now, is that right? Yeah. So you think about how many people that you've mentored through that journey by the amazing guests that you get on. So anyone that listens to you and listens to you consistently, you're mentoring them. So without even realizing it, people are tapping into that. So you thinking about you you downgrading yourself saying you you know you're just a guy from Logan and what what how do I tap into a mentor? What do you want? Who do you value and respect? How do you want to be a better version of yourself? In what areas? Look in those areas. Then find that person and then approach them and say, well, what can I do for you? That's interesting. As you were telling me all that, I was thinking, I don't think I've I ever, you know, I've gone to a couple of motivational sit down uh, and they say, write down your, your goals. I feel like I was always lying. Like I, you know, saying what, what you thought yeah, they what wanted I thought to on the day yep. you know you know what are your goals your i remember your last podcast your why it was a great one I, I think about it all the time why why am i doing this you know especially chasing your tail in a in a uh a shop that i'm in now you're constantly working invoices doing the job circle 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 circles you get home you see your great family and you go oh like why why am I doing that? Well, yeah, I've got a money and blah, blah, blah. But at the same time, there's a huge why hanging up in the, in the, in the air going, why are you alive? Like, why is this, is this it? You know, are you working just for money or, you know, I'm sure it's got to be 90% of the population just thinks that's what it's all about. Yeah, absolutely. And now, and what I said last time around that why is exactly it's powerful. And instead of thinking, got to set goals, got to set goals, got to set goals, it's vitally important, but understanding your why. So what I meant by that is understanding your why of why you're here and why you're doing what you're doing. But then don't keep asking questions of why am I doing it? Why this? Why that? Shift that why then to a how. So understand your deeper why. So my deeper why, for example, enhancing and optimizing my grandparents' legacy So that's my deeper why. But now if I go out and say, uh, why am I doing this podcast with Drew or why am I traveling to Sweden? Instead, I say, how? How 
can I improve on my why? So I know what my why is, but how can I improve on it? How can I learn, grow, and develop? How can I mentor people to be the best versions of themselves? How, how, how? And I only learned this at a deeper level. Two days ago, I interviewed Hugh Jackman's acting coach on my podcast, Dean Carey. 